you. So the barber puts a dollar bill in one hand and two quarters in the other hand. And he says to the kid, which one? And the, the, the kid chooses the two quarters. And he says, what did I tell you? That kid never learns. So later on, a customer leaves. He sees the young boy coming out of the ice cream parlor across the street licking his ice cream cone. And he said, can I ask you a question, young fellow? Why did you take the quarters instead of the dollar bill? And the boy replied, because the day I take the dollar, my game is over. <laughs> True story, probably not. <laughs> Genesis chapter 17, if you have your Bibles. Genesis chapter, chapter 17 and the first four verses with emphasis on the first verse, where it says this, When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am God Almighty. Walk before me faithfully and be blameless. Would you bow your heads? Dear Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to carry these morsels of your word into the house today. And we pray that these words would rest where you want them to rest and have the effect that you want them to have on us all in Jesus' name. Amen. This was the first time that the Lord appeared to Abram. There were other encounters, but this is the first time Scripture says that he appeared. The first encounter uh, of the call of Abraham was in chapter 12 of Genesis, where the Lord said to Abraham, Go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. But that verse... Uh, did, does not say that the Lord appeared to him just that he said. So God spoke to him, God directed him, God called him, but he didn't appear to him, at least that's not what it says. I even looked it up in Hebrews, it doesn't say anything about an appearance then. So this encounter in chapter 17 was special. The encounter in chapter 15 was a vision. 15, 1 says, After this, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield, your very great reward. And in 15, 4, the, Lord, the word of the Lord came to him. But back to Genesis chapter 17. Yahweh declared, I am God Almighty. In the Hebrew, El Shaddai. El is God and Shaddai Almighty. And he appeared to him in the Shekinah, a glorious physical display of his presence. This is the first time in the Bible that God has appeared, at least recorded in the Bible, has appeared. There was no way for Abram to doubt that he was in the presence of God, of El Shaddai, of God Almighty. And there was, a, there was a warning, the directive. He said, I am God Almighty, walk before me. Walk in full view of God. Know that he always sees what you are doing. Walk and know that I am God. Walk and know that the presence of God is with you. He knows where you are. He knows what you're thinking. He knows what challenges you're facing. He knows what lies ahead of you. He knows what he knows everything that you will ever experience. He knows. Walk before me. Don't get on your own tangent and don't get ahead of God. Walk before me. Keep in the path that is before him. Don't think that you can conceal anything from God. 
by diverting off of the path and going somewhere. He knows where you are all the time. He can't, he, he, not in the attic, not in the basement. There's no place you can hide from God. There's no way to conceal even your thoughts from God. He knows. <laughs> He knows. To some, this is terrifying. But to the believer, on the path, before God, being a walk in a walk before Him is security. Walking before Him is what we're, where we want to be. I want to walk before God. Amen. Second point in that is walk faithfully. Without faith, is it impossible to please God? Abraham's being right with God was seated in believing God. He trusted and believed God, even though it seemed ridiculous. But he trusted and believed, and it was credited to him, that faith, as righteousness. We cannot come to him for salvation without faith, because it doesn't make any sense. Does it have to make sense? It's God's Word. It doesn't have to make sense. We just do it. The world wants to make sense of everything. But then our walk will be different if we come to Him in faith, if we trust Him completely. The walk we were on before that is not going to be the walk we're on now. No longer will we walk to please the world or to please ourselves. James 4 and verse 4, you adulterous people, don't you know that friendship with the world means enmity against God? Therefore, anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. So here's how we are to live in verse number, starts in verse number seven. Submit yourselves then to God, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Come near to God and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Grieve, mourn, and wail. Change your laughter to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and He will lift you up. Change your laughter to mourning at the moment when you thought everything was perfect because you were living your own way. When you convert and go away from that, that was what you were laughing at before should not cause you to mourn because you offended God. And your hand was on the hammer that drove the nails. Number three in the directive was be blameless. I am God Almighty. Walk before me faithfully and be blameless. Hebrews 12, 14. Make every effort to live in peace with everyone and to be holy. It takes an effort to be holy. Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. A blameless walk before God is a holy walk. The world is ungodly and unholy. Those in the world please the world's ungodly system, which is getting more and more ungodly. A good example is this gender business. To the holy, this is vulgar and disgusting. So is abortion, so is gay marriage. The alphabet people are ungodly. At least what they hold dear to them. But they can be saved, and they are. They get saved. To be blameless is to be sanctified. To be in the process of coming nearer to God and farther away from attachments to the world. Without holiness, the Bible says, no one will see God. That's in Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 14. Back to Genesis 17 and down to verse number 16 of Genesis 17. I will bless her, referring to Sarah, 
Sarai was her name at that point. I will bless her and surely will give you a son by her. I will bless her so that she will be the mother of nations. Kings of peoples will come from her. Then I will make my covenant between you and will greatly increase your numbers. There were conditions. Then I will. This is after you walk before me. After you walk faithfully. After you walk blameless. Then I will. And Abraham, we're back in 17. Abraham, Abram fell face down. We should always surrender to the will of God. Abram humbled himself completely, withholding nothing. We should do the same. Maybe if you're on your face before God, you can't get up again. But you can humble yourself in your heart. I had a CAT scan on Monday, and I couldn't get off of that thing. The nurse had to put her up, or the cat, the radiologist, whatever they, the cat scan, had to put her arm on my back and set me up on there so I could get up. <laughs> CAT scan was negative, by the way. There's no argument that you can win with God. No argument. The world thinks they don't need God. They're being foolish. The world thinks they know better. Marxism, socialism, communism. They hate God. They hate the church. They hate you. They hate the nuclear family. They hate the idea of private property, all of which were established by God. Continuing in verse 3, And God said to him, now verse 4, As for me, this is my covenant with you. You will be the father of many nations. This guy was 99 years old. His wife was 10 years younger. She had no children up to this point. And he's promising a son and many nations through him, through her. But there was a sign of the covenant. This is my covenant, my agreement with you. In verse 11 of 17, you are to undergo circumcision. It will be the sign of the covenant between me and you. The covenant had a sign. There was a, a condition, a, a, a sign of the agreement. Today, a covenant is like a contract. The deal is spelled out. Party the first part, party the second part. It's a, it's a covenant. Circumcision was and is painful. A sensitive part of a man's body was being cut away. And then they were to do it with all their, their male children at, at eight, when they were eight days old. The act demonstrated that the Israelites were committed to the covenant to allow for the men to allow themselves to undergo that and to let God be God in their lives. It reminded them of God's part of the covenant, which was God's promise to make Abraham the father of many generations, that he would be a faithful, personal God. And that he would give them a land to call their own in Canaan. Circumcision is a bloody thing. There's a cutting away. Circumcision was required as a sign of the covenant with God. We're not required to be circumcised anymore. In our culture, baby boys are circumcised, most of them, for appearance and health reasons. And the Jews still do that as a sign of their covenant. The shed blood of Jesus and its spiritual application to the sinner is a sign of the new covenant that Jesus established by his own blood. You know, I've worked with a Jewish fellow years ago in Hartford, Connecticut, and uh, 
I was asking him questions about I said well what if a man converts to Judaism and he's already circumcised he says the rabbi takes a snip it has to draw blood that's what he said there has to be blood but Jesus shed blood satisfied that requirement forever Matthew 26 27 to 28 then he took a cup this is in his own blood now and when he had given thanks <coughs> he gave it to them saying drink from it all of you this is my blood of the covenant which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins the first covenant was signified by the blood of unblemished animals well, the very first one was the blood of the foreskin, but then unblemished uh, animals, specifically a lamb. That was the Mosaic Covenant. Jesus was the perfect lamb of God, whose shed blood satisfied the penalty permanently for all of eternity. They had to do the lamb sacrifice over and over and over again. Jesus shed blood satisfied God forever. Romans 2.29, no, uh, no, a person is a Jew who is one inwardly, and circumcision is a circumcision of the heart by the Spirit, not by the written code. Such a person's praise is not from other people, but from God. Circumcision of the heart is cutting away of anything and everything that presents uh, that prevents us from fearing the Lord, loving Him with all our heart, serving Him with wholeheartedness, and obeying His principles and precepts. It includes removing anything that we love more than Him via repentance and faith. The promise, Genesis 17 and down to verse 16, I will bless her and will surely give you a son by her. I will bless her so that she will be the mother of nations. Kings of peoples will come from her. At 99 years of age, Abraham would have a son by Sarah. The rest of the promise became true. We need to come to Christ in complete surrender and humility. Mm -hmm. Abram fell face down. Moses often did that. No blood of ours is needed. No blood of animals is needed. Jesus' blood paid it all forever and ever. Yahweh says, I am God Almighty. Let's honor Him. And keep in mind that he is the awesome creator of the universe. Let's honor him and keep in mind that he holds the fate of every person in his hands. Let's honor him and keep in mind that he is eternal, omniscient, omnipresent, and omnipotent. Keeping in mind how awesome he is, we need to be completely humble before him. Yahweh says, walk before me. So let's stay on that path that he wants us to be on. Let's stay on the straight and narrow. That young man that delivered the wheelchair was on a path that God wanted him to be on. He shared the word. The word did the work. It's awesome. Let's keep on the path that's illuminated by the light that is God's word. Then Yahweh says, be faithful. Let's walk in complete trust. We get saved by trusting Jesus as Lord and Savior. Let's trust Him when we can't see how we can prevail. Let's trust Him when everything seems to be going crazy. Have you ever proved Him faithful in those crazy times? Most likely. Over and over, right? And then He always said, be blameless. Let's walk in holiness. 
He makes us holy. We just have to stay in that walk, stay on that path that's illuminated by the Word of God. Amen? Amen. We have the promise. We have the covenant in the blood of Jesus. We also have the warning. Same warning as Abraham. Walk faithfully and be blameless. As born again children of God, we're to live a different life than before conversion. A different life. The new life is a different life. Can you remember your old self, your old way? <laughs> can you remember? I sure can. And I wasn't a... Well, I was a bad person because the Bible says there is none righteous. But I, but I didn't, you know, I wasn't an axe murderer. I wasn't a drunk. I wasn't a drug. I wasn't any of those kind of prominent things. But I was on the wrong side of God, and that's all it takes. Yeah. Yes. I'm going to close with Psalm 19, starting with verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The statutes of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. See, if we're wise in our own eyes, then that doesn't, that doesn't penetrate. Verse 8, the precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The decrees of the Lord are firm, and all of them are righteous. They are more precious than gold, than much pure gold. They are sweeter than honey, than honey from the honeycomb. By them your servant is warned. In keeping them there is great reward. But who can discern their own errors? Forgive my hidden faults. Keep your servant also from willful sins. May they not rule over me. Then I will be blameless, innocent of great transgressions. May these words of my mouth and this meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, Lord, my rock and my redeemer. I am God Almighty. I am El Shaddai. And it was an appearance. There never had been an appearance, at least not recorded in Scripture. Walk before me. Walk faithfully and be blameless. That's a challenge for all of us today. Amen. He is God. We shouldn't have a flippant attitude about God. He's God. Walk before me. Blameless. Would you stand? See, Lord, we are your people in this house today. And we are doing our best to be blameless before you, Lord God. But we pray that you will always show us a wrong turn. Show us when we're off the path. Show us, Lord, the errors of our ways, because there will be some. Show us, Lord. Help us to always come back to you, Lord, when we stray. To always be in your fold. To always humble ourselves. To always be illuminated by your word. And to be always willing to do your will. And to be your servants, Lord. We thank you for your great salvation. We thank you for this church. And we pray that you will increase this church and to increase it in holiness, Lord, and repentance. We are your people. We offer ourselves to you, Lord. Bless each one, Lord, as they go forth today. Bring us all back in triumph the next time we meet in Jesus' name. Amen. Blessings, everyone.